and I hold them. Um, when I did the course, I was going through a traumatic uh, moment of my life, depression, uh, many dark things going on. And um, I can say it wasn't just life changing, it was life saving. So that's why I'm completely in love with him. But he knows it. It's okay. He already knows it. All right. Um, if you just give me a second, and if I don't screw up here, I'm going to share my, uh, my screen with you. So just bear with me and technology. We all know how that works. Okay. Can you just tell me, can you all hear me? And can you see the slides? Is that okay? Just a, yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Because I always worry that technology is going to let me down. Okay, here we go. So today we're going to be looking at mindfulness in the EFL classroom. Now, as we know, mindfulness can be defined in, in many ways, but there's this definition that I quite like that is just very, very simple. It's compassionate and intentional awareness, which is something that we've already heard about today. So mindfulness is the practice of paying attention. So we pay attention to thoughts, physical sensations, and we also pay attention to the environment. Um, but the important thing is that it's without constantly, and for me, I need to stress this, without constantly feeling the need to judge what's happening or to make it more than what it actually is. So to cultivate this present moment awareness, we pay attention on purpose, but with an attitude of kindness to ourselves and to, to others as well. And thinking about students, so the benefits of mindfulness include increased concentration and engagement, uh, greater decision-making skills, there's an improvement in the attention span and focus. There's an improvement in compassion, which I'm stressing again, and self-esteem. So today, um, I'm kind of the bad guy. I'm uh, After all these lovely sessions, I'm taking you back into the classroom. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and we're going to be looking at some very, very uh, simple activities that we can incorporate into our lessons, but not just into our lessons, but into our lives as well. I just want to let you know that if you're interested in the slides or in the activities, I'm very, very happy. I'll share my email at the end. I'm very happy to share everything with you. Okay, is everybody ready to rock and roll? All right, here we go. We're going to start with the first activity. Now, I just want to say that some of them may be quite familiar to you. Uh, you might have seen them before. And we're going to start with the first one, which is the 54321. Now, we're not in the classroom. We're not in the classroom environment. So what I do is to, um, I just, I want you to focus on the environment around you. Just have a quick look all around you just to take the environment in. Okay, and I'm going to ask you a few questions and you don't have to write them in the chat box. All I want you to do is to think about them. Okay, so where you are, what are five things you can see? So just think about that, five things you can see. And what are four things you can touch? And you can actually touch them. What are three things you can hear? What are two things you can smell? It's close to lunchtime, so I can imagine. And what is one thing you can taste? Okay, so this is a very simple activity that we can do with our students. And it's, it's very useful um, to ease your state of mind in, in stressful moments. Um, I love using the five senses with my students. And this is something 
um, that we can do at the beginning of the lesson. Um, we can do it at the end of the lesson, but quite often I like doing some of these activities at the, in the middle of the lesson, because that's when their attention dips and you want to bring them back to you and you want to bring them back to the here and now. So we have the five, four, three, two, one activity with the senses. And this is also something that teachers can do very quickly before going into a lesson because we need to practice what we preach. Um, we talked about uh, how important it is for us as teachers to practice mindfulness before we actually use it with our students. But practicing what we preach has, has benefits not just for those who we preach to, but for us ourselves. So we need to think about ourselves and any of these activities can be done. Uh, you can do them yourselves. All right, now what I'd like you to do is to look around, you look at your table and pick up an everyday object, okay? So what object have you picked up very quickly? It can be a pencil, it could be a pen, a rubber, anything that you can, Okay, now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to be scientists, all right? And this is an everyday object that you've seen many, many times. And I want you to look at that object as if you were looking at it for the very first time. And I want you to notice something new about that object that you never noticed before. What kind of things did you notice? Well, this is something that we can do with students. You can just get them to pick up an object that they have uh, on their desk, or you can ask them to go through their school bag and take out any object and have them examine it as scientists and try to discover something new. And this is what the professor was talking about, looking and noticing. And no, there's so many things around us that we don't notice and we just see them for the very first time and, and that excitement of noticing these new things. Now, I sometimes worry. Do you guys worry? Actually, I worry a lot more than I should. <laughs> um, what are the kind of things that you worry about on a daily basis? Uh huh. Okay, our students also um, worry as well, don't they? There's so many things that we worry about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read um, some sentences to you and I'd like you to finish the sentences, not in the chat box. I want you to finish the sentences in your head. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So I sometimes worry about being bullied, but then I think, I sometimes worry someone worry about someone being mad at me, but then I think I sometimes worry about having had an argument, but then I think Sometimes I worry about wanting to hurt others because they hurt me. But then I think. Sometimes I worry about not being good enough. But then I think. Sometimes I worry whether I worry about whether people like me. But then I think Okay, was that easy to do?
Um, our students worry about a lot of things. And um, there's one thing that's very important to me uh, that I got from the course. And it was one of the main takeaways that I got from Professor uh, José Govea was when he said that we can't control our thoughts. And that is so, <clears throat> that was so reassuring when he said that we can't control our thoughts. However, what we can control <clears throat> is how we react to them. So basically what we're doing here is giving a positive spin um, to the things that worry us and that worry students. And I think this is a lovely activity to start off the year with, um, uh, but not just at the beginning of the year, there are times that are more stressful for students. Um, or sometimes there are things that are not going so well in your class. Maybe there are issues between classmates. Maybe there are discipline, discipline problems that you need to deal with. So this is an activity that you can do with your students at any time. But then um, what you can do is getting them to come up with those things that they worry about and how they would give a positive spin, how they would react to them and making them aware that they can control their thoughts. They can't control what they worry about, but they can control how they react to them. And this goes for teachers as well. Remember when I asked you about the things that you worry on a daily basis, this works for you as well. All right, now what I'd like you to do is to take a look outside the window. So if you've got a window in your room, and let me know what the weather is like. Oh, we've got sunny. Oh, we've got cloudy. Cloudy, sunny. So it's cloudy and sunny. I'm looking outside and I, I've got a sunny day, but I'm just wondering, do your feelings, sorry, I'm just gonna, do your feelings match? Um, do your feelings match the weather outside? So if it's sunny, would you say that your feelings are sunny as well? Okay, most people are, are saying yes. All right. Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to be working on our inner weather report. Now, I want you to imagine your feelings are the weather. And I asked you about today, and most people said that, that they, they, it was sunny for them. But uh, if you were to describe like yesterday, yesterday's weather report, um, what would you say about it? Was the weather the same? For example, in my, for my case, there was a gentle breeze that soon turned into wind. What was your weather report for yesterday? Could you just, just chat, type some words? Windy, cloudy. So we're talking about our inner feelings as the weather. Okay, and this is showing, I just wanna show you how you can get your students writing their inner weather report, looking at the weather as feelings. And I'm gonna give you a lovely example here. So let's have a look. So yesterday, a fierce storm blew in with bolts of lightning and thunderclaps. Pitch black clouds hovered overhead and it poured all day long. Today, I feel sunny with gentle breezes and no clouds at all. So the, as you see here, the weather are the feelings and emotions. And this gets students to notice their feelings, but as they come and go, and it's noticing that feelings don't, that the weather is always changing. It won't be sunny every day. It won't be cloudy. The, the weather may change throughout the day, just as our feelings change throughout the day. You can get students doing this, and this is something I like, doing it at the beginning of, of a lesson, just to get an idea of how they're doing. They can make it into a story. And if you look here, look at all the rich language. I'm taking you, we're going into EFL here. 
So there's such rich language and weather is something that comes up a lot. You can do it at the beginning of the lesson. You can then do it again at the end of, of the lesson. But one thing that's really interesting is that we can tell students to place themselves in the sky because the sky is above the weather. So the weather is happening below. So if we are the sky, we're outside of ourselves as observers, just looking down at, at what's happening. So we're observing from above. Okay, so now we're going to do a little listening activity. I love this frog. And I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Um, I'm gonna try and time the 30 seconds. And what I want you to do is to listen to all the sounds that are around you. And I want you to count the sounds you hear. But something very important, I do not want you to judge the sounds. I don't want you to think, are they pleasant or unpleasant? We're just counting the sounds that we hear. Are you ready? So here we go, 30 seconds. Eight times up. How many sounds did you hear? Okay. Um, so this is a this is a lovely focusing activity that I do with my students very, very often, and they actually love doing this activity. Um, did you, I forgot to ask you, did you judge the sounds or did you just count them? The important thing is just to acknowledge what you hear and listening and listening without judgment. And something that you can do with your students when you're doing speaking activities is speaking, making sure that students know that there is no judgment. And sometimes as teachers, we need to step back from that judgment. I know we're trained to listen for the mistakes, there are alarms that go off in our heads when we hear uh, mistakes, but letting our students every once in a while just do a speaking activity, knowing that they are not being judged, they own their story, they're being listened to. And it's, it's, a, it's a good way to just give to the students a chance to rehearse their speaking. Um, we're gonna do another listening activity. And I'm just gonna share with you very quickly here. We're gonna listen to a piece of music. And what I'd like you to do, I want you just to listen to it again without judgment and think about how it makes you feel and possibly can you identify any of the instruments, okay? But no judgment, just how does it make you feel? Okay, how did it make you feel? And any instruments, happy, energetic? Okay. Um, this is something that we can do in class, bringing in, I quite like bringing in uh, instrumental music. Um, this is a funky one. You can bring classical music. It's something that you can do in the middle of a lesson. And again, it's just getting students to listen to music without judgment and focusing on how the music makes them uh, feel. Now, just a little fact here on the side. 
uh, music is used in advertising because of the impact it has on feelings and emotions. So this is a, the interesting thing is that retail shops use fast and loud music because it makes people shop quickly and spend money. And slower and softer music like classical music is used in restaurants because it actually makes people spend money. Uh, so maybe if you're feeling happy or sad, it might have been because of some song you heard on the radio on the way to work. So bringing in some music into class. Now, do you like stories? Yeah, we all like a good story. Stories are a good way is, is part of mindfulness because we're in the here and now when we're listening to a story. So would you like to hear a story that I have for you? All right. So we're going to listen to the story called the story of the dandelions. Now I have a question for you. I don't know how to say dandelions in Portuguese. Can somebody tell me what it's called in Portuguese? Dente de leão. Dente de leão. Well, that makes sense. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So if you can just sit comfortably, I'm going to tell you this story of the story of the dandelion. So here we go. So once upon a time, there was a king who lived in a big castle surrounded by an enormous lawn that he was so very proud of. He wanted the lawn to be very, very green and always short. He loved it like crazy and never wanted to see weeds in it or even one dandelion. An army of gardeners took care of his lawn and pampered it day and night. One morning, as the king was taking a walk, he found a dandelion. It was yellow and beautiful. But he went into a fit of anger and pulled out the flower, shouting, throw half my gardeners in the prison. A few days passed. Half the gardeners were away in prison. But one morning, the king discovered three dandelions. He went into an awful rage and shouted, send all of my gardeners away and bring me some who can protect my lawn. That's when I approached him and said, your majesty, <clears throat> if you send away all your gardeners, the dandelions will overrun your whole lawn. In life, there are things that we don't like and getting angry won't prevent them. They happen anyway. The only solution is to accept them. And sometimes with time, you even get to like them. The months passed, the dandelions bothered the king less and less. He even thought the little flowers were rather pretty. And since then, he discovered a new joy. He loves blowing the seeds off dandelions. At that moment, he liberated all the gardeners from jail. So how did the story make you feel? Um, so basically, um, with students, what, what you can do is get students to, if you can, take students outside where there's grass, where there's lawn, and instead of focusing on the grass, get students noticing the beauty of the wild flowers and how we can co-live together, the, the, the lawn and the wild flowers. Or you can get them to draw a picture of the king's uh, lawn with the wildflowers standing out. Um, if, uh, and also thinking of environment, you can talk about the importance of, of uh, wildflowers for bees. I'm a beekeeper, so I take that very seriously. And also if you work with Clil, there's a, a link that you can make here with Clil. Now we can also think of the green lawn as the perfection we want in the classroom. But you know, there will always be weeds, there will always be wildflowers and dandelions, which doesn't make our lessons less beautiful. So mistakes are part of the learning process. 
Now, if you've got a piece of paper next to your notebook, um, what I'd like you to do is to just draw a seed, any seed, okay? And you are that seed. And what we're gonna do here is a visualization. It's a meditation practice, which involves visualization, okay? And so you're going, I, what I'd like you to do is to find a place where you feel comfortable and to close your eyes and be still. Okay. Take a few breaths in and out, in and out. So you can notice your whole body, the top of your head, the tip of your toes. Listen for your heart beating inside your chest. Can you feel it? Now imagine a clear form all around your body, the outer layer of your seed. And there you are snuggled inside, held, breathing in and out, your heart beat grounding you. You are quiet and calm. This is winter. Slowly something is stirring deep inside. You are opening your heart, your belly, your core all expand and new energy is emerging. You are sprouting. This new movement within you reaches upward towards the light. Feel the sun beaming its brilliant light on you and the rain showering you with love. On your own time, you will grow inch by inch, cell by cell. You have all you need. This is spring. You're growing stronger. Feel your roots extend further into the earth, solid and secure. Your body and head grow longer, taller, reaching. You're expanding in all ways from the inside out. There is downward movement and upward movement, and it doesn't stop. You are bursting with life, blossoming. You unfurl and turn your face to the sun the fullest expression of you. This is summer. Slowly the light begins to fade and you slow down again. It's time to shed. As the old drops away, you feel lighter. Let go of all you no longer need. Gently shake your body and wipe it gently with your hands to welcome release. When things end, there is space for beginnings. This is fall, the whisper of promises to come. Find your breath again, in and out. Find your heartbeat again and breathe with your heart. Find the outer layer of your seed once again. Rest into the rich stillness back into the possibility of all that will be, the beginning of the circle, one of many, many, many cycles you will go through. You are a seed. You are in a constant state of growth, changing and transforming and becoming over and over again. Sometimes you need stillness. Sometimes you need to open. Sometimes you need to blossom and other times you need to shed. Trust yourself to know what you need. You are responsible for your seeds. You must see them blow, bloom. So grow seeds, grow. So how do you feel right now? Again, with your students, this is a, a meditation. In my context where I teach, I don't need permission uh, for, for meditation in the classroom, but in your context, I don't know if you need uh, consent. Um, 
if you don't feel comfortable, um, uh, sorry, just going back to this meditation about seeds. Again, this is something that you can easily uh, link to Clil talking about plants and the growth and development of plants. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable doing a guided meditation with your students for the first time, there's this lovely video that I've used many, many times. It's called One Moment Meditation. So if you go onto YouTube. Although One Moment Meditation is all- um, It's a lovely one. It's a one minute meditation that you can do with your students and it's got lovely cartoons. And that's how I actually started meditation um, in the classroom. And we're coming to the end. So gratitude. What I'd like you to do is to think, thinking about this long morning that we've had, and I want you to think of three things that you are grateful for today. Gratitude is very important because it teaches us to be more compassionate. And, um, and I would suggest finishing your lessons with your students, asking them what they are grateful for at the end of the lesson or at the end of their, their day. And we've come to the end, but I don't want to finish without reading a poem to you. Um, I, said, I, I, I said at the beginning, if you need any of the material um, from today's le uh, from, uh, lesson, ha, I'm already in the classroom, from today's session, um, you can email me and I'm very happy to share all the material with you. So just to finish off, I'd like to read a poem. Are you ready? And it's called Mindful. So every day I see or hear something that more or less kills me with delight and leaves me like a needle in the haystack of life. It was what I was born for, to look, to listen, to lose myself inside this soft world, to instruct myself over and over in joy and acclamation. Nor am I talking about the exceptional, the fearful, the dreadful, the very extravagant, but of the ordinary, the common, the very drab, the daily presentations. Oh, good scholar, I say to myself, how can you help but grow wise with such teachings as these, the untrimmable light of the world, the ocean shine, and the prayers that are made out of grass. And this is by Mary Oliver. And I'm very grateful for having shared this time with you. And thank you very, very much. Obrigada. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> I don't know if there's lots of thank Thank you and very grateful to be here. That's why I, that's, that's me. I'm grateful to be here with you and having the opportunity to uh, know more about this concept and how to breathe and how to be present. <laughs> um, Elena Surdor, in the beginning, uh, the question, uh, would you get students to share their thoughts out loud? About worrying, what they worry about, Elena? I think... Uh, I think it was... It had to do with the activity. I sometimes worry about... Worry about. I think I, the, the ones that I read, I would get them to share because they're, okay. they're, they're not personal ones. These are ones that I'm bringing into class and we're learning okay. together. But then I would get them doing their own because that's quite personal. And it, it depends. I mean, if they're willing to share with partners, maybe they can, or, or maybe it's just a personal thing for themselves, but knowing that they- Just they to reflect. Have, to reflect and that they have the power to react Okay. In a positive way. Okay, Anna, thank you. Well, if we don't have 
more questions and it's one. Sonia, can yeah, I also so ask a question to Tanya? I, I wrote on the chat, but maybe you didn't uh, see it. When you do the breathing in and the breathing out, the breathing out, do you normally do it through the nose or the mouth? Through the nose. Never through uh, through the mouth. There are different um, there are different purposes for okay. different things. So within the conscious breath, since the aim is to bring our attention inward, if you try, you can experiment yourself. I, I invite everyone to experiment for a few moments. Breathe in and out through the nose and see what it feels like. And mm -hmm. then do the same thing, breathing in and out through the mouth. And then you will notice the difference and you will have your answer. So okay. breathing out through the mouth is appropriate for um, some purposes and practices, for sure. But in this particular case, it's in and out through the nose because it's the natural way we breathe. We mm -hmm. breathe naturally through the nose okay. unless it is uh, blocked for some reason. Okay, because I thought it had to be through the mouth. But what happens when I, I try to start meditating is I become very tired when I breathe out through the mouth. Yeah, yeah, because it, it also requires some sort of thought to have to breathe out through the mouth because the okay. natural thing is that you breathe through the nose. It's through the, the nose. It's the natural flow. So you don't have to intentionally think, oh, wait a minute, I have to breathe out through through the mouth. So the mouth. for this particular reason here, but it, I'm not saying that breathing out through the mouth doesn't have its practices and, mm -hmm. and its use. It, it's just for this particular practice of conscious breathing. It makes a difference to just breathe through the nose because it gives the body the message that you're safe. You're, you're in the breath. The breath is happening naturally it's a natural breath okay tanya thank you so much thank, thank you. you thank you ok eu vou terminar uh, como comecei em português <laughs> quero em primeiro lugar uh, agradecer em nome da api e em nome dos nossos uh, fantásticos oradores uh, desta manhã uh, a presença agradecer-vos também a vocês colegas neste início de ano estarem presentes Uh, muito ativas também espero que esta manhã tenha correspondido às vossas expectativas e que tenha contribuído de alguma forma para nos vos ajudar na, na nossa vida profissional mas acima de tudo uh, de estarmos mais presentes no nosso presente e que e consigamos mais uma maior tranquilidade e que consequentemente isso pode beneficiar -me. A, a nossa vida profissional e o nosso estar com os nossos alunos. Um, como o Zé Moura disse no início, portanto, este grupo de interesse especial vai partilhar convosco a primeira e-newsletter. Um, iremos ter, com certeza, outros eventos, uh, mas isso é algo que se falará mais tarde. Uh, acho que foi um belíssimo arranque deste novo sigo da API, Uh, muito contente por termos mais de 100 colegas a quererem participar uh, neste dia. Um, já coloquei na... Sónia está com... Já, okay. já coloquei na, no chatbox o link para a feedback form. Uh, agradecemos imenso a, a vossa opinião. E por último, acho que me resta desejar um bem-aja a todos, votos de um excelente fim de semana. Vemo-nos em Lolé, se for caso disso, dia 30 de setembro e 1 de outubro deste ano, <risos> daqui a umas semanas. E como viram, o nosso congresso, teremos notícias em breve do nosso congresso em 2023, em Lisboa, no Isqueté. Uh, e portanto. É só da minha parte, espero, não sei se a Sónia... das que irá dizer alguma coisa. Sónia, posso pedir um favor? É possível partilhar a apresentação do professor João Pinto Gouveia? Não? Uh, lamento, mas ah. julgo que não, que nem, ah, uh, portanto, não podemos gravar, nem acho que seja possível partilhar, partilhar. a apresentação. Ah. 
Agora dos restantes oradores, sim, faremos isso muito em breve na próxima semana, está bem? Um bom ano letivo para todos, um bom fim de semana e tudo de bom. Obrigada. 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 Obrigada.